Hello there and welcome to the video. What are we going to look at today? Are we going to look at Redemption? Well, because we are going to look at the game, the second game in the match between Helgi Gretarsson and Hannes Stefansson. The first game made the rounds on the internet. It went everywhere because a Grandmaster missed a relatively easy made in two moves and his opponent allowed it. So how do you bounce back from such a mistake? Do you just, you know, crawl into a shell and then don't come out? Or do you fight back? Let's see what Helgi did today. He had the black pieces, so we're going to look at it from the side of the one trying to redeem himself. So e4 by his opponent. What do we do? He went for d6, d4, knight f6. He usually plays the modern with black. Sometimes the perch defense. But this time he went for the Philidor, played e5. Not given the match situation, probably white should take here. Take the queen and just play this position. It's difficult to win, but Helki, he likes a fight. So he wouldn't mind. He would play this on and, you know, wait for his chances. But we get the Philidor, the so-called Hanham variation, where black goes bishop e7, castles, c6, and we have a4. And now h6 by Helgi, and he hasn't castled. So what are we going to see here? Queen c7, h3, a5, and bishop to e3. Well, if you are familiar with my friend Simon Williams, he put out an excellent course on chessable on the Black Lion, and there he advocates an aggressive system for black where we go g5. And well, we've had takers here in Iceland. My friend Brian Thorfinnsson, a grandmaster, he played it in the Icelandic Championship and won a very key match with this opening. Also, I saw a very strong Serbian play this in the online, online Olympiad, also with good results. But this is actually a dangerous line. And Helki, he needs a fight. He needs to win with the black pieces. So what better than to create confusion with a black lion? And that's what he did. G5. Bishop back to f1. And here, probably too early with the knight f8 maneuver. It's it's quite common to go knight f8 g6 and, and put it on f4. Other ideas are pushing the pawn, pawn to g4. We can put the rook behind the pawn. Many aggressive ideas. But Helgi goes for knight f8. And this could have been severely punished because white can play d takes e5 and take again on e5. This is actually quite stunning because if we take bishop to d4 and the floodgates simply open. A sample line would be queen c7. Queen e6 is good also, but let's have a look at this. I mean, queen e6 is the best move, but just to show you, you know, what, what, what's going to happen, you know, the floodgates will open. We'll even take this, we'll play e6. Bishop e5 will come. This looks quite bad for, for black. And in fact, the computer thinks white is just completely winning. So this would have been a hammer blow for Helgi. But Hannes played the more sensible move, knight d2. This knight is coming to c4, trying to eye some uh, key squares on the queen side. g4 by Helgi, and this might be too early. Maybe we can prepare it, knight g6 first, maybe the rook behind the pawn. Because I think white can play h4 now and close things down a little bit. And I think he should have done that after takes takes. He should have gone h4 here. But he went down with his plan. He played knight c4, eyeing this square. Now we have a knight and a bishop hitting this square. Okay, Helgi took on h3, Hannes took back, bishop to e6. True, we hit the queen, but the queen goes back to b8. And yeah, we're keeping an eye on this pawn. Queen to d2, and now bishop b4. And despite the king being in the center, black has very interesting play here. The g file is open, uh, we can play this to kick, kick the bishop away. And th this pin is annoying. For instance, uh, let's play a nothing move for white. Uh, some move like, let's say rook eight d1. And now we play something like this. We can flick and then check if we want, but let's play this. We hit the bishop, we can't lose it. We're trying to take and take the bishop. And if the bishop goes back, then this is hanging because of the pin. So it's not easy for white. And actually after bishop to b4, white went slightly off the rails with f4 here. And this is just too aggressive. Helgi went knight to d7, hitting the bishop. White has to keep this bishop. So it goes back, and now the rook comes in, and he takes the pawn. That's what he should do. 
Now he could go knight d5, he went knight h5, both seem like good options, king h2, and now a very, very nice move by Helgi, plus king f8. What's the idea here? Well, I think the idea is if white plays a, a, a seemingly good move like rook d1, getting the last place into the, into the game, now we take on c4, and we take on e5, and there's no pin anymore on the e-file, and now we're hitting the bishop, we're threatening this, all sorts of uh, bad things can happen if we, if we place a bishop back here. Guess what? F3, knight e4, and this maiden 2 would not have been missed by by black. I had to get the pun in there, right? <laughs> so king f8, nice move. Rook e4, also a nice move. The rook is on the e-file protecting the pawn, and he makes way for the bishop to attack the knight. Queen c7. Probably black needed to play a more powerful move here. Bishop e2 now hits the knight. And here, Hannes finds queen takes f4, which is a great move. White sacks the exchange. And after knight takes e4, all his pieces are pretty good. Black's king is stuck here, and white has full compensation according to the engines. However, he flicked in this move, and this is just bad because after king e8 takes, black cannot take the pawn on e5, which was previously defended. So he takes the pawn, we have bishop d3, and now black should be completely winning. He can take on c4, and then on g3, something like this, takes, takes, then flick in this one to unpin, unpin the knight, and now we can take this. Okay, there, there are some scary, th scary things like check, bishop here, check, king here, queen here, check, but uh, we bring the knight back, and black is up a piece. Helgi played rook takes d3, which is also a strong move. Same idea. But white flicked in this one, push it back to f8. Knight d6, king d7. And now he took the knight on e5, queen takes e5. Helgi went rook takes h3, why not? Take the pawn with check, the rook is defended. King g2, bishop takes d6, and this is all fine. And black is actually completely winning here. Rook check, black is up a rook. But white has pressure on the bishop. But how can we relieve the pressure? Well, we can play bishop to d5. That's what he should have done. True, we have this check, but we can move the king. And when you take the rook, I take this, and I'll be up a piece. But Helgi went rook h1. Trying to deflect the rook. If rook takes, then we take the queen. But white just took on d6. And what's worse, he now takes on e6, defends the queen, and if we take this, it's queen takes. And we win the rook, and white has two pieces for the rook. So Helgi went queen b6, check, trying to keep pieces on, but knight c5, rook h2, true, this can be taken, but then we take the rook, hoping to win this one, but white can defend it. King uh, uh, rook to h1. Now we finally took it, and the end result is that we have two minor pieces against the rook. But we get the pawn on b2, white has to defend the knight first. So he defended the knight, we take the pawn, so material is equal. But can black find winning chances here? That's difficult, because white played knight b3, and the idea is to take, and we have a perpetual. We have to stop it. Black played rook h2, the king came up to f3. And now queen back to h8. Now white should definitely take the pawn with jack and come back to f5. And that's actually the only move to keep things in uh, under control. But Hannes played queen f5 first. Probably thinking he can take this pawn when he wants. But queen f5 was needed to stop queen h3. But now queen c3. And now white might regret not having taken the pawn on a5. Bishop b3. And now we take. And now, Hannes thought he could simplify. He took on a5. Halki took. And it looks like we're about to win this pawn. I can tell you that after king e3, rook takes a4. According to the table base, black is actually winning. But would black win in a practical game? I don't know. I think he would, but it would, would be difficult. But white hat... A seemingly good idea. He played bishop to e4. 
And his idea was, after rook here, to take here with check and then take with a bishop. And this is a theoretical draw. And this would have seen Hannes through to the final. But at the bishop e4, Helge flipped in the move rook a3 check. And now it turns out if you go to the second rank, I take this and I have a double attack. What do you do? And the key point is, let's say we go king back, we take, knight takes, we don't take because that's a draw, we play this, and now this one is still hit, and then we take the knight, and we keep the pawn. Very tricky. So white actually has to play king f4 to protect the bishop, but now comes the genius move. A genius move by Black. He does not take the pawn, he took his time. And he realized that this knight does not have a lot of squares. And what move did black play here that basically prompted white to resign? Can you find the winning move that made Helgi totally redeem himself, get to the tie breaks, and now he has a chance to get to the finals? He played rook c3. The knight doesn't have a square. Also, we're protecting this. White can't sacrifice here, and the king is coming in, the knight is going to be lost. The only try would be to bring the king, but once you go king e5, I play rook c5, and I win your knight. So total redemption by Helgi. And what a way to bounce back after, well, one of the worst moments of your career. And well, let me uh, have Helgi sum things up for you. This is what he wrote on his Facebook page. I want today and tomorrow are tie breaks. Never let mistakes define who you are. What a way to do it. Bounce back like a champion, like a winner. So tomorrow they will play the tie breaks to see who goes to the final. And the winner of the finals goes to the World Cup. Well done, Helgi. Respect. Like I said, it's a journey, not a destination. Helki is appreciating the journey. See you in the next one, guys.